Hello, everybody, and indeed, welcome to another edition of Hoosier Hometown Heroes. I'm Tony Val, and today my guest is Mike Ertle, president of Ertle and Company. Mike is a longtime friend, and today he's bringing some innovative ideas on how to lower our health care costs. I invite you now to enjoy my conversation with Mike Ertle. Hoosier Hometown Heroes is sponsored by Prometheus Consulting. Prometheus is Indy's most trusted name in outsourced IT support. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining me today. Glad to do it, Tony. So here's where I would like to start. I, I Now, you and I have known each other for a long, long time, but our viewers, uh, this might be their very first introduction. So I would like to, let's imagine you and I are, let's say, at a networking event and we've just met for the first time. Can you give me like a 60 second kind of elevator speech to introduce uh, Ertl and company and, and, and what your services are? Yeah, absolutely. So at Ertl and company, our main focus is controlling the cost of health insurance and health care for our clients. That's really the, that's the main thing that we do now. How do we do that? Probably don't get uh, time to do that in 60 seconds, but it's a combination of things. One, we have a medical team led by Dr. Amy Kylie Ertle, who works with our clients, the employees of our clients, on preventive care and chronic disease management. So she has a mobile health clinic. We have a couple of them, actually, and she leads a medical team that goes on site to our clients to get their recommended preventive care because only about 30% of Indiana residents get the recommended preventive care. The other thing that happens out of that is that we end up doing a lot of chronic disease management, your blood pressure under control, your cholesterol under control, your diabetes under control, all of those sort of manageable things that we can keep under control with the goal of keeping our clients out of the expensive parts of the healthcare system. We have great doctors, we have great hospitals in Indiana. However, it's very expensive, especially when you get into a hospital setting. We know that that's going to occur, and in lots of cases it does need to occur. Uh, but what we're trying to do is only make it when necessary. So what can we prevent? Can we, we prevent going to the hospital? That's a lot of things, but one of the big things is just being healthy in the first place and not needing that expensive care. That's, that's really the, the, the first part of it. And then we do a lot of other things around the insurance side to control those costs as well. But the best way to control costs is not having to access the expensive parts of the healthcare system. Absolutely. And, and uh, so first of all, as a business owner, you know, I can guarantee no, no one uh, watching this interview will be uh, surprised at the idea that uh, healthcare costs feel like they're getting out of control. This is a big challenge we all face. Um, your, your mobile medical center, I think, seems to really set you apart. And what and what Dr. Amy does now, you guys started doing that. Has it been 10 years ago or is it? A yeah, little it's been actually, as you we talked earlier, time flies. It's been uh, closer to 12 now. Wow. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and you have now multiple you have more than one mobile medical center. We do. We do. Wow. So what we find is that why don't people get their preventive care? It's not that they, you know, make these decisions not to take care of themselves. It's just inconvenient. You have to take off work. You're getting a preventive physical. So now you're going into a hospital or a physician's office. In many cases, you're sitting next to folks that might have the flu or any number of things. So people, you know, you have to take off work. It's not convenient. It's not always the most comfortable thing. So we try to make it, you know, as as fun as possible in terms of still, you know, it's still a, a preventive uh, exam. That's kind of where we start. And then, like I mentioned, that can add, like, lead into chronic disease management, that sort of thing, taking care of situations, or perhaps uh, somebody with high blood pressure, working with them, could be medicine, could be lifestyle, 
lots of lots of ways to get that under control, depending on, on what our physician and, and that patient decide makes the most sense in terms of the best path. Then we kind of monitor that. What gets them to to uh, being healthy and that sort of thing. But a lot of a lot of it is people don't go because of the it's it's not convenient. I can attest to that for sure. That that's one hundred percent. I can relate. Now, with your mobile center, is this something that you regularly schedule with clients? Do you are are you going out? Let's say to their to the client parking lot once a quarter or something. How does that work? Yeah, in a perfect world, we do kind of an, an annual health event, which is um, that's a sick that's a physical primarily. And then, you know, we are able to, within that event, we do a little finger stick. And then out of that blood, it takes our machines about 15 minutes. And the medical people call it cooking the blood. But uh, So then you get their results right away. Wow. Cholesterol, um, liver enzymes, any number of things that you get out of there. And uh, your A1C reading to look at how your blood sugar levels have been over the last 90 days. So we do a lot of those tests, get, get tests. So people go in there, they get their blood work done, and then they meet with our physicians and they go over it and they review that information. Now that's kind of an annual. In a perfect world, then we do a six month event, which is more of uh, still blood work, but a really more of like kind of an often used term, which I don't love is the biometric screening, which is the blood work, but we do that and we con consult on that still. And then we compare as the years go by, you're seeing them basically twice a year and you're, you're giving them a look at, Hey, here's where you were, mm. you know? So you're constantly like we do them at our office. So we just had one in early January, um, and then we'll do one mid-year. And then I'm constantly getting updates, kind of like going to the dentist. You go in every six months. It's always top of mind. You don't go, oh, my gosh, I had that annual physical. I don't have to worry about that for a year. Well, in, in our situation, once you have the annual physical, you know, okay, in six months, um, that's going to, you know, some sort of a health event looking at your um, the particulars of your current health is going to occur again. And then we have a lot of, so those are kind of what we would call health events, but then we have an on-site or near-site clinic, however you want to call it, a really near-site clinic where we come up and, and then we would see, we would schedule them in between those. Those are a little bit more based off of, it can be checking somebody's blood pressure because we found it out at the health event. It can be that sort of chronic disease management, but those can also be, um, I'm not feeling well. You know, I've had this pain, you know, more of a diagnostic approach. So um, that's generally how a lot of our clients do it. Some folks have, you know, unique circumstances, so we're out there more, but uh you know, starting out for clients, um, really, if you can just get them to understand the healthier employees has a direct correlation with the cost of your health insurance. It's, it's directly correlated. I mean, healthy yeah. employees have lower health insurance costs. I, I'm, so, uh, I'm sure that uh, you're you're asked nearly every day as you're let's say maybe you're talking to prospects. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure everyone's main question is how in the world can I reduce my expense? And it it sounds to me like you you really have it figured out. Yeah, uh, so it's really a labor of love for our medical team because as you probably are aware, you know, in Indiana, we we have a lot of really primary care doctor, kind of they call them deserts, where are certain parts of the state where you don't have enough primary care for the population. One of the reasons that a lot of physicians, makes sense, don't enter primary care is because it's not the most lucrative 
um, you know, thing for, for physicians to do, but it's essential. So the key is to, you know, have very caring members of our medical team that kind of do this. It's more than just a job for our medical team. It's really kind of a mission, helping people. Um, some of the um, emails I'll get back after they're out there that says, hey, your physician assistant did this for me. They listen. They say, you know, in some case, I mean, I sound dramatic here, but it's like, hey, you saved my life. Because like sometimes just as a quick example with blood pressure, they call it the silent killer. So you could have a healthy male 35 year old that's a runner that's in great shape and they've never been through and they haven't had a physical for a while because they're in great shape, right? Why would they? And they can have high blood pressure that's off the charts. Could be simply just uh, hereditary. So we find some of those things. Um, and the key is, A, you're taking care of that person, just sort of a quality of life thing, which is, is probably the number one most important. And then from a business perspective on a cost, for cost um, you know, look at it from a cost side, in a lot of cases, about 7% of an enrolled group have about 80% of the claims. So you're trying to find and manage those conditions before they turn into reports. The insurance industry is great at giving you data on where your money went and yeah, we can all agree, hey, it was you, you spent too much. You know, we, we can all agree on that. So we believe in data, it's critical, but we want to kind of, in some case, well, in virtually all cases, find those 7% that are going to have the big claims before they show up on a re report. Kind of that rear view mirror. The data is great. It can uh, predict some things if the group's large enough, if your sample size is large enough. It can be a predictor of what's coming and what needs to be modified. But the other part is, you know, how do we say to a client, hey, you didn't have that big claim, so it didn't show up, right? So, so your costs are lower. Um, and some of that's just, you kind of got to look at the overall cost because it's kind of hard to say, hey, we, we eliminated, you know, two strokes and a, you know, a prostate cancer, for example. You know, Mike, uh, I'm, I'm curious, speaking of data, and and you guys do such a good job. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I've been a fan of the Erdl and Company Facebook page for a long time. You do such a great job of, I think, posting um, education. Really, you know, here uh, I think just the other day you guys did a post on here are maybe the ten best exercises to to get healthier, uh, things like that. I'm curious from a a, a a data perspective. Do you get the feeling that we are as a as a society, we're getting sicker, or are we getting healthier? Do you do you have any insight into that? Well, in Indiana, I'd say that we're probably, unfortunately, uh, our health is not improving. If that's a little <laughs> one way to say it, <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, here's the thing: like, let's look at like my day this today. I got in here at seven thirty. I've been at my computer. I've, you know, it's been very productive for me. I've got up or has got up or the, the way to say that, but I've been able to walk around the office a little bit, but I haven't moved very much. So although I would say my work day so far has been very productive, I haven't moved. So it's the simple things. One of the things that like we'll post on our various social media is just some ideas like you had mentioned the top 10 exercises and what we're really trying to do is get people to move. The person that is training for the mini marathon, we're, you know, that's great. And we can supplement them with the ideas on from a, from a fitness perspective, but they're going to do it any. So what we need to do is 
find ways. It's a culture for our clients, you know, so I at least am aware that I haven't moved much today. So I can kind of alter what I do here the rest of the day, make sure that maybe I, it's raining right now, but you know, I go for a walk. I, I do some things that I know, Hey, my, my first part of my day hasn't included a lot of movement. So, but I, you know, look at Indiana and we have great people in Indiana and I'm not, I'm speaking to myself, my employees, all of Indiana, really, you know, we don't move enough. We probably aren't the best in terms of our diet. And I'm not saying eat a perfect diet, but just healthy choices most of the time. Uh, some of us probably consume alcohol on a, on a more frequent basis than what would be recommended. There's a lot of tobacco use still in Indiana. Um, so we have such a huge opportunity for improvement. And some of the stats that we'll look at, we have a report where we can look at county by county mm. and have a look at you know every county in the state of Indiana. It kind of tells you where they are. Uh, there's lots of good data out there. Uh, the, the, the challenge is what, what do we do about it? My medical team, when they leave here, lots of times they'll do their uh, start their exams, maybe six thirty, seven 7 o'clock in the morning, which sometimes means they're leaving our office at 5 a.m., depending. So it's hard work. It's kind of a grassroots, you know, because lots of times people want to get those preventive screenings done early because you have to either fast or they're, at least watch what you eat, right? So I you see. don't, yeah. some people aren't signing up for preventive screenings at 5 p.m. So, um, so we do those early and, 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 and it is kind of that labor of, of love for our medical team, but we, we're able with our groups to get that 30% preventive screening that's happening throughout the state of Indiana. And we get that stat from two, the two biggest insurance companies right now in the state of Indiana are United Healthcare and Anthem. And they both say it's in the mid thirties in terms of preventive care. The females, a little higher uh, preventive care uh, compliance than the males. Mm. Uh, but either way, we're in the 30% on compliance. So uh, if we can get our clients up to 80%, some cases 90 and in a few cases, 100%, we're all the employees. And then spouses have claims too. So we try to get them involved. Uh, but it's a, it, to answer your question, I don't think we're getting healthier. I do think we're more aware of what it takes to get healthy, you know, what to eat, movement is important, whether it doesn't have to be a five-mile jog, it can just be lots of steps. So we have lots more tools now than we've ever had and much more awareness. Now we just have to do it. We have to find time to do it. We have to make it a priority. Statistics will tell you, that the folks who get up and make that kind of the first thing they do, you know, go for that walk, whether it's inside or out, whether it's a jog, whether it's uh, some sort of a strength program. And those might be different things daily, you know, four to five times a week. If you make that a priority and do it right away, that's the, you know, it's, it's, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. You know, you really have to make it a priority, at least for most of us. I, yeah, I think we all struggle with, uh, I, especially in the kind of post COVID era, um, mm -hmm. you know, this, this conversation right now is, is very indicative of the new world we live in. We're on a zoom call, which, mm -hmm. um, which means, you know, we don't even have to leave home to, to uh, meet with people, to do our work. So the, I, I think moving is uh, moving and, and getting exercise seems to be a, a it's a growing challenge, unfortunately. Right. Uh, you know, you know what I did, Mike, uh, uh, that really helped me. I put a rowing machine right in front of my uh, big screen TV, 60 inch or whatever it is. That's I just perfect. decided how many failed gym memberships do I do I really want to accrue here? Let's I look, I need to look in the mirror here. So I, I put it right in front of my TV 
and by golly, now, now I row most days. So it's, that's awesome. And that's the thing you, what, what works for you, what works for somebody else, you just got to find something that works for you and stick to it. And then a lot of people will say, Hey, don't let perfect, you know, get in the way of like really good or much improved in, in an exercise. Let's say that you made, um, um, a new year's resolution. And let's say you said, okay, I'm going to exercise six days a week. Okay. In one week, you only exercise four. Well, that's not failing. That's, that's not saying, Oh, I'm, I can't do it anymore. I didn't do it. No, it's really good. You still got your four in, or if your goal was to do four and you got two or three in, you know, things happen in, in, in life. Don't let, you know, one week, or a couple of days in a row, um, you know, determine, okay, well, I'm not doing it, or I, I can't do it, or I haven't been able to, to stay with it. Well, no, you really have, because maybe prior to your resolution, you weren't doing it at all, right? So uh, I think that, you know, even if we, we set those high goals, and, and some weeks, some days we don't achieve those at 100%, that's okay, because you know, there is tomorrow and it's those, hey, when we don't do it for a month, when we don't do it for six weeks, right? So in a ways we can't be so critical that, oh, I didn't get that done today. I'm a fit. No, you're not. You can do it tomorrow. And by the way, you didn't do it yesterday, but you did the two days prior, you know, give ourselves a little bit here. Of it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to just what you wrote down either uh, probably now on some sort of electronic device or maybe just in your brain of here's what I'm going to do. Well, if you're doing 80% of that, it's probably a lot better than you were doing. You know, I say you, I mean, in general. <laughs> you like know, I'm, I'm doing just, 30, 40% yeah. if I'm lucky. I'm just... Well, and that's 30 or 40% <laughs> more because we found like you don't have to go run 10 miles. You just – you just have to be aware of moving more. You know, we all do. And when I say these things, I'm really, I'm talking to myself as well as to our clients, to my friends, you know, we, we all make these choices. And let's say one day I know I'm going to not move as much. Well, maybe I'm a little healthier. Or maybe I, you know, on my lunch choice, you know, those sorts of, it's, it's, it's all a work in progress, but I think awareness is much higher. The tools are much greater. The rowing machine you mentioned, you know, if it's what, two degrees outside last week or whatever it was, uh, you know, you can still do that. Um, so lots of opportunities. So I think the future does look bright because we have all of these tools. Uh, it's just that, we have to just kind of build those habits of, of doing, you know, tr trying to, trying to actually, you know, do it, uh, get that exercise or, or watch what we eat. That's sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I do think the future looks bright and certainly it's a little bit brighter um, because of the great work you and Dr. Amy Ertle are doing it. It really, when you guys, uh, start as your, your mobile care unit. I just, I really, I really thought to myself, wow, this is something different and unique. And I think heading in the right direction. And it just sounds like it's, it's uh, been going gangbusters. And, and as a business owner, you know, what you guys do is, is uh, it's much needed. So I, I applaud you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, what's a what's a good way for someone to reach out if they want to uh, interact with you and Ertl and Company and and kind of learn more about how you might be able to help their business? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our website is ertlandcompany.com. Uh, there's a contact link on there that you can uh, shoot us some information if you'd like for uh, us to reach out to you. My email is mertl at ertlandcompany.com. So M E R T E L at sign Ertle and company.com. So those would be probably the two best ways. Certainly go to our um, Twitter and that sort of thing. And, you know, so many ways now to get in touch with folks. LinkedIn's a 
a, a, a huge way to do that as well. So, uh, and, you know, you had mentioned and, and we're kind about the work that we do. And, and I know that, uh, Tony, you've, you've been a big part of kind of like the business, business culture and promoting Indiana businesses. And that's, that's, uh, that's awesome that you do that because we have a lot of great things going on here in Indiana. And sometimes the challenge is it's just getting the word out. For sure. And uh, you, you and what you're doing and, um, you know, your, your work there at Prometheus and, you know, so all of that's commendable. So we, well, we do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I'm a transplant from Chicago. I, I was born in Bloomington, Indiana, but grew up in the Chicago area and moved here in 2000. And, um, <laughs> I've ever since moving here, I, I, I feel sorry for the rest of my family still living in the Chicago area. Not that I, I don't love Chicago, but my goodness, there's something special about our community here. It, it really is a, a big city with a small town feel. And uh, it's just, I found it to be a great place to uh, raise a family, to grow a business. And, uh, you know, it's uh, meeting guys like you, you know, you, we, uh, there's just so many nice people in Indiana. I just, I just love it. What, 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 there's no better place than Indiana, I think, to to uh, grow a family, grow a business, and and just absolutely, like there. you said, it's big enough to where you can still accomplish, you know, your your goals and and have a thriving business. And in a lot of those cases, you know, ship products and services outside of Indiana and throughout the world. Uh, and at the same time, you know. In most cases, when the construction isn't going on, you can still, <laughs> you know, move around pretty well. And we're improving yeah. our um, all of our transportation systems here. You know, they're they're setting um, sort of all of those things that you don't re recognize until you start saying, OK, hey, I want to move a business here. or I want to grow a business here with the education. Can I get employees? Can my people get around? Do they have affordable housing? It's, you know, all of these things. And, uh, you know, I'm biased, but Indiana and Indianapolis and the surrounding communities, you know, I would I would definitely, uh, you know, stack that up against anybody. For sure. Amen. Well, Mike, thanks so much for your time today. It's awesome to catch up with you. And uh, hopefully this will not be the last time on Hoosier Hometown Heroes. Love to do it. Thanks, Tony. I appreciate it very much.